and above all, I think economically, I see the value in us being able to organize these small farmers to benefit from advanced markets. None of these farmers could supply Dr. Brenner or Whole Food or Sainsbury or Cup Denmark. But us bringing the scale of production together from a number of small farmers together, thousands of them, and organizing them, and a program for quality control to offer consistency and reliability for these advanced markets. Now they, are, they can enjoy a, a market that is uh, reliable, sustainable, and is there every year. So they are generated, they are energized to invest more of their energy, more of their even returns, they expand their farms, and, uh, and think in, in a, in a, uh, of productivity and how to grow in their farms and their production. So that's the, the greatest value in, in the economic sense, is that now they, have, uh, they, they are part of, of a more large-scale economy rather than being dependent on, on their own, uh, uh, totally dependent on the local traders. At the social level, the, all of the networking that we've done, uh, the, at, the, at the village base or at the region, at the, at the national base, all of these are networks that create social capital is that we have these networks can be used not only to address the, the main issues that we are addressing in the production, but rather can be used for any issue of common concern and common interest between these communities uh, and, and utilized because now they are a group, they are a, a, they're working together and they have learned how to work together. Uh, and working together, sorting out issues of difference, sorting out uh, how to spend their premium how to, which project to, to, to fund, which project not to fund, and how to fund it, all of this gives them capacities to, to participate in civic uh, organizations beyond premiums and, and producing olive oil and, or making couscous because now they have the skills. And that is uh, true for the farmers, true for the women and, and everybody involved. And uh, the production that we're engaged in because it's within a systemized certification program that checks on gender equality, fair pay, fair wages, health, the, uh, health and, and safety conditions in the work, workplace. All of this, is, even if it is, we're not finding a lot of non-confirmities, it's raising awareness to these, to these issues. Even though we're, we're mainly working with small farmers who are working together uh, as a family, but just checking into these issues and raising awareness to them and making corrections here and there is strengthening the, the community. Organizing the process of the producer, the trader, relations, all of these people live at a different uh, economic scale, they have different class and, and there's dynamics between these classes, how they talk to each other and how, how they, uh, they can negotiate with each other. With each other. The fair trade levels has a methodology that levels the playing field in, 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 in sorting out issues and then that empowers the, the small producers to be active in, in lobbying for their rights, lobbying for their, for, for, for their interests and uh, making sure uh, that these differences in the, in the economic scale does not allow the, the big to uh, uh, exploit the, the, the small. So all of this is the strength in the community at large. And for us, as you saw from the, uh, the Olive uh, Harvest Festival, it's not just the Olive Harvest Festival, the whole idea of, of buying a product with a respect to the cultural identity of the producers, with respect to the right of the producers for fair pay, for return, and uh, the, the, the respect to the producers' relations to their land, all of these uh, 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 recognitions uh, uh, create a, a positive impact on those communities and allow for a more positive cultural exchange between them and the distance communities that they are working with abroad. For Palestinians in, general, in, in particular, because of the political conditions they've been under for so many years and the denial of, of Palestine's presence or Palestinians' presence uh, to them, the idea of communicating with the rest of the world through olive oil has become really uh, an inspiring uh, concept. Uh, for this is our our olive oil in a, on a shelf in Amsterdam. So you normally would encounter Palestine in a 
there in, in, in a news report normally about conflict, about violence, about some problem around the world. To encounter Palestine as a, as, as a Napa Valley or Tuscany product <laughs> is a totally different uh, look on what Palestine is. And, and so the farmers actually take a lot of pride in that, uh, in, uh, in that they are part of a, of a new presentation of Palestine and they are actually capable of making that presentation and they are uh, very much a part of it. They see these bottles at our showroom and they are, wow, this is my product, this is my olive oil. And, and they see these pictures coming from abroad and they take so much pride in it. One of uh, Reed's community college, Andrew, uh, was doing a research on our uh, project in a village of Fakua. Uh, he's from Portland. And uh, one of the farmers told him, the Germans have BMW, we have this great olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> so they are taking so much pride in, uh, in, in presenting Palestine through it and presenting themselves through it. And, and really, and that pride translates into more than just pride, because what I mean for, for the, if we look at the conflict itself, it's, it's, it's about uh, articulating presence in, 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 and a culture over, over a landscape. So fair trade is raising awareness to conditions of producers. So we, as our product is being sold, we are, we are raising awareness to these conditions denial of water resources, denial of, of, of accessibility to the farms, denial of, of accessibility to markets and confinements. So farmers seeing that this actually is becoming a, an alternative form of engagement for them, an alternative form of exp expressing their, their, their challenges and grievances, and an, an, an alternative way of empowering themselves and, and finding a, lot, a great deal of support around the world to help them uh, empower themselves and. Uh, and finding a lot of friends to do that. So that really moves us into a whole new sphere of how we can, even from the farmer's perspective, look at the conflict and hopefully also it will impact some of the activists how to engage in the conflict in, in a more positive way. Here, we are, instead of, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I come from an activist, I was part of Al-Auda, one of the founders of it. I saw she, a t-shirt here wearing Al-Auda. And, uh, and, and I grew up, I mean, while I was in campus, I was always active on Palestine issues. It's not that I uh, regret any of it. Uh, all of it is, is my, it was, uh, I'm, I'm always compelled to do it. But uh, as a Palestinian, I, I think uh, we, instead of a, us being always responding to Israel and what's, what the occupation practices are doing on the ground and reacting to that, Actually, we are allowing this occupation to reconfigure us because our, our own expression is coming, starting by the very practices of the occupation itself. But rather here, we're more invested in, in, in presenting, articulating what Palestine is, what Palestinian culture is, what the traditions were. We are engaged in agriculture. The, the, the agri-business is the culture. So we're trying to dig up what's so best our, our, our agriculture, so as actually in, in doing so, we are reviving our culture in its true nature and, and presenting it to the world and making space for, for it in the world. And that's, and, and that's separate, regardless of what Israel does. That is coming from our own, from our own traditions, from our own history. And, and by the way, we're finding a lot of support. And by the way, we are empowering ourselves, we are empowering our communities and allowing them a chance to sustain their life and their land from their farms. So it, for me, uh, as an activist, it has been the most productive and gratifying form of activism I've ever engaged in in my life. Uh, what I think what, well, what we've done in Palestine in, as, as a form of innovation is really placing the social system as an integral part of the eco ecosystem. I think we've done a great deal of raising awareness here in the U.S. that uh, organic farming is important and uh, uh, environmental sustainability is important. But if we miss the human beings who are on top of that environment and, and that ecosystem, we're still very far from achieving sustainability. We need the sustainability, the, the social community and social formations, just as ecosystems, they seek to regenerate themselves and they regenerate themselves in that ecosystem itself. So they are totally integral part of that ecosystem 
and that's what we are doing in Palestine to uh, offer to offer uh, uh, an integrated approach to social and environmental sustainability, making the farming practice meaningful to the farmers and workers beyond the economic benefits. They are subscribing to it. It's become meaningful to them. It's become their, their way of uh, sense of being and representation. Making the development relevant, relevant to the cultural knowledge. We're making sure that we are communicating their traditions, what they have to offer and accepting what they have to offer and appreciating it. And that helps us carve a space for these farmers within the modern economy, within the modern system. This is a, a, a olive tree that's 3,000 years old that's still producing olives. As I said before, if that, if that uh, tree can still produce olives, then there must be some traditions there that, uh, that are worthy of appreciation. So uh, this is we are working with the farmers to articulate those traditions, and that is giving the farmers that appreciation is giving the farmers a positive attitude towards development, towards the modern economy. Otherwise, a lot of the times you you have development agencies going with a jacket that they want all of them to wear it and, and fit in it, regardless of what they are. You have to be this way for us to be modern. You have to be this way for you to be democratic. You have to be this way for you to, to, be, to be a recipient for our money. And, uh, and, and mostly, farmers are, or traditional communities become so resistant. And not just so resistant, become more traditional. Sometimes they dig up dig up 2,000 years old traditions, maybe, or they invent it. They imagine it that it was part of their traditions and bring it back just to tell you how different they are from you. So, because you're, you're just one, one them in a certain format. And what we've done is carve a space for our traditional communities within modern economy, within modern society. And today, the Palestinian farmers are at the, here. They are being appreciated in many summits about sustainability, money gatherings around the world, we're invited to give an example of ethical sourcing from Palestine. So we're giving them a space in this, the most hip and sexy movement around the world. <laughs> so they are at the forefront of it. So that's really our main success and that we were able to, uh, uh, to, to bring that space for them. And again, we really could not have done it if you were all that part of it and for all the work that you do. So thank you so much for all the work that you do in your own communities. And we are so pleased and uh, grateful to be able to share some of the treasures the earth has given us in our community, in our locale, with you around the world and be part of this moment. Thank you very much and for being here. And again, thank you for what you do. Thank you.